So I'm welcome everyone today we'll be going through AS accounts control accounts. So in in AS the syllabus contains of this things. Today we'll be going through them. So to start with we need to understand what is a control account and why it is made, right? So I'm just gonna write my question, what is a control account? So, control accounts, they are basically used to check the accuracy of the entries made in sales ledger and control, say, uh, in sales and purchase ledger. So, let's start, so there are two types of control accounts. So there are two types of control accounts. One is our sales ledger control account. which we will be using as SLCA for this video. And then we have our purchase ledger control account. Which we'll be referring as PLCA for short. So there are two types of control ledger account. Oh. Let me put this here. Right. Right. Better. So there are two types of control accounts. So let's start with so let's start with our sales ledger control account. Okay. So we're gonna start with sales ledger control account. What happens when when a business makes a sell or when a business sells their product? Not all products are always sold on cash basis. Some some products are also sold off credit basis, right? So let me just make a pointer here. All right. So what happens when when a business makes a, their sales on a credit, what happens? Well, it increases. It increases our trade receivables. Sorry. So it increases our trade receivables. Now, we know that trade receivables, this is an asset for the business right and when assets increase they are they're debited right and since they're debited and since they're debit any value any value that is going to increase our trade receivable is going to end up on the debit side of our control account and any value that decreases our trade receivables so since trade receivable is an asset, let me just write it, wait. I'm gonna show it, don't worry guys. So this is an asset. And if asset increases, it's debit. And if asset decreases, it's credit, right? So any value that is gonna increase our trade receivables is gonna end up on the debit side of the control account and any value that is going to decrease the trade receivables is going to end up on the credit side of the control account. So let's make a, sorry, so let's make our control account now. Um, wait, let's see if we can draw something of it. Oops, I that. There we go. All right, so this will be our dollar signs. Oh, wait, first thing right here. All right, so let's start. Right. 
SLC. I'm just gonna write SLC, guys. I'm just gonna write SLC. Eh? This will be our dollar signs. Now, for a business, there will be an opening value. So, uh, let's say a business ends its financial year on 31st December. So, on 31st December, there are there's supposed to be. So on 31st December, there's supposed to be a lot of sales that were on, made on credit and those credits were not recovered, right? So these are this will be their opening value. So our balance BD is definitely going to be on the debit side. Now, when we make more sales on credit guys it's very important this is very very important because there's sometimes in the question they're gonna write sales made on cash so that cannot be on this control account right because we've learned that anything that is credit any, any sales that is made on credit is gonna increase the trade receivable and increasing the trade receivable means that will be on debit side so this is very important to make sure this will be on the this will be a credit sales. Now interest charged. So what is interest charged? So let me let me Okay, so interest charged is basically when there there is going to be a when there are trade receivables who haven't paid your cash so you basically charge them with interest for let's say 5% or 6% on how much you, they owe, owe you and that is going to increase our trade receivables like the amount is going to increase right so this will be on the debit side as well and another one is dishonor checks what is dishonor checks by the way? Dishonor checks is basically something let's say your trade receivables has paid you uh, by the bank but that check has not been presented to your account and that means that we have not been paid and that will be a dishonor check. This could, dishonor check could also mean so basically what is a dishonor check? Dishonor check means when we when 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 the trade receivables has has presented you the check, but when you submit the check to the bank, the bank refuses to pay trade receivables. This could be any of the case, but the general idea is you don't get paid even after the trade receivables have presented you with a check. So that is going to be on the debit side as well. Now, what will be on the credit side, by the way? Um. So when we when when we are making a sale, sometimes our sometimes the customer returns some of the goods, right? So that is going to decrease our trade receivables because that amount is not being used, right? So I'm going to write return in word. By the way, guys, return in word is used as a Cambridge uh, textbook word. So I'm going to go with return in words. Um, in other cases, you might see sales return, just the same thing. So another thing is when we receive a cash, when we receive our cash from the trade receivables, that is also going to decrease our trade receivables. Uh, this could be cash or this could be bank, any payment that has been made to us. Right? Now if we allow some discounts, let's say, count allowed. If we allow some discounts for, to the trade receivable so that they will make their payments early, that will be reducing our trade receivables, right? Because we're not getting the original amount we sold our products for. That is going to decrease the trade receivable as well. And if we write off any bad dates or if we cannot recover any trade receivables, that is going to be in here because it's just basic common sense. We're not getting the cash back from your customer. Now another thing is contra. 
what is Contra by the way? Well, con so what is Contra basically? Let's say we sold our product to a customer and for the same customer, we brought some products for our business. Now, when you're buying our products from, us, from the same customer, we need to pay, right? And instead of a payment, we are adjusting it with the products we sold to the customer. So that is going to be included in our control entry. And sorry, that is going to be included in our control account because that is going to decrease our frequency, right? We we sort of made our our payment was sort of made uh, via the products we purchased from the customer, right? All right. And now the balance PD. Sorry, that I'm saying. So, and we've learned this will be our really the debit set the balance video for the next year or the next month, depends on what the question says. Right? I'm gonna write a, I'm gonna write this stuff up. And explain what each of this means below so you guys don't have to worry if you need just pause the video and check out what you need to know I'm just gonna keep this here for a second oh. now we're going to be moving towards our purchase ledger control account. Let's see the different color for purchase ledger control account. Uh, so I should be. I don't know why I seem to write this off the grid always. Okay, so purchase ledger control account is basically the same thing but the opposite of the sales ledger control account. What happens is, um, let me the different color again. So, let's see. So, what happens is we make, we purchase, so what happens is we purchase something from the supplier and not all purchases are made on cash, some some purchases are made on credit, so some purchases are made on credit so when some purchases are made on credit this increases our trade payables, right? This will increase our trade payables. And what is a trade payable? Trade payable is a liability, right? This is a liability. Trade payable is a liability. And we have learned that if liabilities increase, it's gonna be credit, and if liabilities decrease, it's gonna be debit. Right? So it's going to be the same thing as we did for our sales logic control account. So I'm just gonna copy this and make some alterations here. So all right, okay. So similar to our Sales ledger control account or purchase ledger control account, as you know, liabilities decrease, they're going to be a debit, and if liabilities increase, they're going to be credit. So, for our purchase ledger control account, when you're making a purchase on credit, it is going to be incre it is going to increase our liability. It is going to increase our current liability. So this is going to be so this is going to be on the credit side, and similarly, if any interest is charged for the amounts we owe to the suppliers which is going to be increasing our trade payables so that is also going to be on the credit side right 
Now let's move on to the debit side. If we return any uh, products we purchase from the supplier, which is our return outwards, is going to decrease our trade receivables, right? And similarly, any cash or bank payment made to the suppliers will be decreasing our trade variables, uh, which is going to be on the debit side. So if we receive any discounts from the suppliers, uh, that, that will be decreasing our trade payables as well because they're not paying the true value when you made the purchase. And for Contra, so that is what you so that is what you need to know to create a control account. And that will be it for our control accounts. Um, there are some theories you need to know. So also there are some few theories that you need to learn. Please go to the textbooks for the theories. Uh, and I'll be discussing this. Uh, I'll be discussing the theories in another video. And in another class. Alright. Thank you everyone for watching this. And thank you everyone for joining today.